I'm going to show you the quickest and the easiest method to setting up an MCP server and building AI agents with it in NAN. So by the end of this video, you will understand what MCP is, why it matters for AI agents, its real limitations that most people will not tell you about, and how to actually implement it into NAN. Whether this is the right choice for your projects or if you should stick with traditional workflow approaches, I will give you the honest breakdown. Right now, most of us build AI agents inside of NAN like a Russian nesting doll, where we use a very modular workflow system. So here is how it typically works. So first off, you have your main workflow with a chat input, your AI agent, and then we have multiple call workflow nodes down here, call NNN workflow nodes. So these nodes connect to sub workflows on this side that you can see right here. So we have one for email tasks. We have another one for calendar management. Now, there is actually some issues with this approach that I have found. First, your main agent, it has to correctly identify which sub workflows to call based on the user's request, which is going to rely entirely on the system prompt being precise enough for the AI agent to make the right choice. Now the agent, it might misinterpret the request and it might call the email workflow when the user actually wanted to call this calendar workflow and execute something from there. Second is once inside this sub workflow, another agent must then decide which specific tool to use within that workflow, you know, send email, uh, read email, delete email. And this creates another layer where the AI can just make the wrong choice, potentially executing unintended actions. Now, when these failure points actually hit, your agent might send you an email when you wanted to maybe schedule a meeting or delete files when you wanted to read them search the wrong database entirely or perform tasks that you didn't intend because the context was not clear enough at either decision point. So additional problems include some complex prompt engineering where each sub workflow, it needs its own carefully crafted system prompt. Then there's workflow management overhead where managing dozens of separate workflows, it just becomes a nightmare to deal with. You might've dealt with this. I've dealt with this a bunch in the past, especially when it comes to production agents. Then we have context loss where information gets lost when passing between workflows and scaling complexity where more capabilities, it equals exponentially more sub workflows to actually maintain, which is just a big headache. Okay, now let me go ahead and discuss this second approach right here. So this is the MCP approach. MCP, if you're not familiar, it stands for Model Context Protocol, and it's just a standard defined by Anthropic. Nothing too crazy. Now, despite some of the hype that you may have heard already, MCP really isn't revolutionary new technology. It's simply just a set of rules for APIs to follow that makes it easier for AI to actually interact with it or them. Now, instead of having multiple sub workflows with their own agents making decisions, MCP, it allows your main agent to directly discover and use tools from external servers. So it is really just ensuring that all tools can properly describe what they can do detailing their capabilities and what data that they are going to be returning so that the AI can actually discover what is possible. And then from there, make the appropriate tool calls and perform successful executions. Now, how this actually works, we have these two tools down here. These are both called MCP clients. So similar to above, we had the NAN workflows. Now we have MCP clients. Now these clients here, they call upon these MCP server triggers right here. So we have two of them. We have one right here. We have one right here, each one with its own function. So this server triggers function up at the top is to send emails, reply to emails, create drafts, label emails, get emails, get labels and mark emails as unread. This server triggers function is to deal with calendars. So creating events in your calendar, updating events, deleting events, getting events, all that sort of stuff. Now, when a request actually comes through the main overarching agent right here, the MCP client, it just calls off to the correct MCP server. So it's determining which client to call. So this MCP client one is gonna to communicate to this one if we need to maybe send off an email or get an email. Then from there, this MCP server trigger is then going to look at all this information and tools that it has access to. Then from there, it's going to take these tools and it's going to say to this main overarching agent, hey, here's all the tools that we are given access to. Which one should we use to perform the successful execution? And the agent from there, it's just consequently going to come up with an answer. So this agent right here, it'll come up with an answer and then send that to this MCP server one last time to actually execute the chosen function that the user is requesting. So you could think of it like a USB-C port for AI applications. 
Now, instead of the Russian nesting doll approach where you have, you know, agent is calling the NNN workflow tools, you now have a direct line. So you have the agent discovers the tools, agent chooses the tools and executes. So the MCP server, it acts like a smart toolbox, if you will, that can tell your agent exactly what is inside and how to use each tool, eliminating deep guesswork and multiple decision points that really creates those failure scenarios that we talked about earlier. And the pros, it includes a single decision point that is going to eliminate the double agent decision problem with only one failure point instead of two, which is obviously better. You're also going to get faster development where you could be building MCP servers just once in NAN and reuse them across multiple workflows. On top of that, you'll be getting better reliability with no more agents calling the wrong sub workflow or tools within your workflows. On top of that, you get reusability where you build this once and you use it everywhere across different applications, different workflows, different processes and automations that you're building out. So the standardization as MCP was officially announced in open source by Anthropic in about November 24. And it was adopted by these major AI providers, including OpenAI and Google. It's easier tool discovery where the AI can actually automatically discover what tools are available from the MCP servers and consistent data structure where everything is just going to follow the same format across all of its tools. Now, there of course comes some cons that others probably won't tell you about. So really quick, MCP is stateful, not stateless, which is perhaps the biggest issue since MCP requires server sent events and maintains a stateful connection between server and clients. So you can think of this like having a phone conversation instead of text messages where you need to stay connected the entire time. While most modern web services prefer stateless connections, which are more like text messages where you send a request, you then get a request and the connection closes. So you can't use serverless functions because MCP requires those stateful connections. So you can't deploy it in serverless environments and serverless functions are like pop-up shops that appear when needed and disappear when, you know, when they're finished, saving costs and resources. But since MCP actually needs that phone call style connection, it forces these developers to use more resource intensive server setups. Then we have the context window overloading. So this is going to occur when you register many MCP tools with an agent, as all these tool descriptions get added to the agent's context window, which can sometimes overwhelm it. So think of this like trying to make a decision while 20 people are shouting different options at you, causing the AI to get confused and get distracted from the original task. So there are also security concerns since MCP requires these stateful servers and has deployment complexity and creates new security vulnerabilities that traditional workflow approaches don't have, plus limited availability since not all services have these MCP implementations yet, which kind of sucks if you need to integrate with specific tools. You know, for production use right now, traditional N8N workflow approaches are definitely going to be more reliable and production ready, especially if you're going to be dealing with services that don't have MCP implementation yet. But MCP, it makes sense if you're building a simple agent that just needs access to MCP compatible tools like web search, Google Maps or calendar. And it's it's for internal use or testing where the standardization, it, these standardization benefits might outweigh the implementation challenges. But we're seeing all things like Appify coming out with um, their own MCP server and all these other marketplaces and tools and all these other software. So it's becoming more adopted, which is great. So without yapping too much, let me show you guys how you can actually be building this out for yourself. So I'm going to come over to the right hand section and I am going to do the same thing that we normally would when it comes to building out these agents. So I am going to just add a chat trigger and we're this to an AI agent. Similarly, we're just going to add a chat model per usual. Isn't any different than what you would normally do. Add a memory, not completely necessary, but we're going to add it anyways. From there, we are going to create a MCP client. This could be a little bit backwards, but it doesn't matter just yet. Next up, we're going to create a MCP server. So if you just search up MCP, make sure you are also using the latest NAN version. So go to MCP server trigger. We're just going to use the production URL. We're going to copy this code and we're going to paste it into this MCP client right here. So this is going to allow us to actually connect to the proper server trigger. 
Then from here, we're just going to add the necessary tools that we want to be using for our workflow. So in our example, maybe we want to be connecting with Airtable and we want to do all these different things. So I could show you some of the different things we could do. We can create new uh, records. We can update new records, deleting records. If you want to do that instead of doing Gmail, but for this demo, we're just going to use Gmail and sending emails. So I'm gonna select a different account. Okay, and we're gonna let AI define everything here. That looks fine. So we're gonna send a message in Gmail. Let's duplicate this. We want to now get many emails. We want to do another one where it's going to maybe mark as red, or we could do one that's going to remove labels. It's actually fill in everything that we need to fill in here. Let AI define what needs to happen. So let's do that. Okay, now we're just gonna connect the server trigger to each node right here. So if you want to add more functionality all you have to do is just add a new server trigger, keep everything within its own domain. Now, what I mean by that, if you are using Gmail, then keep that within its own server trigger. If you want to do another one where it's going to be Airtable, then have that be a completely separate server trigger. Or if you want something to have the functionality to what's another good example, maybe using Outlook or maybe updating Google Sheets, whatever it may be, just use a separate server trigger instead of just stacking a bunch of tools within here. That's what I recommend. Now, what we actually have to do from here is just go ahead and prompt our AI agent. So we're going to add a system message and we're just going to be pretty brief, pretty broad about this. We don't have to get extremely concise and specific. So what I'm going to say is you're a helpful assistant per usual. You're given access to an MCP client in server. I need you to use it to send emails and get emails. Okay. Let's just give it today's date as well. I always give my agents in prompts today's date. It's typically a helpful thing to do. Let's go ahead and input that. All right, now let's try this out and see what happens. I need you to send an email to Nick or prizesai.com and say hello. Okay, let's send that off. So one thing that I completely forgot to do is actually put this right here in a brand new workflow. So let me go ahead and instead of just using this same canvas, I'm going to copy this and throw it in a new workflow. So let's create a new one, paste this right here. Okay. Now let's try copying this production URL. Let's flip this to be active and let's try pasting this back in here. We could delete this now and throw this within our MCP client down here. And so that there. Now, one thing I do want to mention right here, and this is what separates N8N from any IDE like Claude, is you could select which tools you want to be using. You can use, or we can select the particular tools that we have access to right here. We can restrict things. So if you want to only allow something to have access to one out of three of these tools, you can do so. So it just gives you a little bit more flexibility, customizability, if you would like. So let's just include every single one. Okay, so let's just save this now and let's try running this once again. So I'm just gonna copy the same exact thing. Okay, so it looks like everything sent off properly. And as you can see within my inbox, we have this message being sent to us. So in a nutshell, this is how you actually can implement and start using MCP server triggers, MCP clients, and everything to start building your agents. So again, I recommend you heed my advice of when to use this, maybe not use it for production, but it's definitely going to be helpful for internal use. But let me know down in the comments what you guys are using this for. This is the quickest and the easiest method to actually start using MCP. But in any case, hopefully you guys found some value within this video. Let me know if you did. And of course, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.